Let's see how the Hack Computer ALU is implemented. Hello YouTube, merely looking at the Hack Computer and the ALU control bit table can be quite difficult to understand how the flow of information goes through. And uh, in order to implement it using the HDL, it's much better if you can actually draw a diagram and trace the uh, bits and how it flows through the entire CPU will be a much better uh, way of understanding how it works and how to implement it. So I've got this particular diagram and it shows the solution to the hack ALU and I'm going to introduce the information and how it flows through, how you connect all the particular elementary logic gates into a working ALU. I've seen this before in the previous video and this is the ALU implementation. So you've got every column as a sequence um, leading up to the output and in the HDL implementation you've got to get this into a code form but I think that before you understand how the code actually works and connects it's much better to look at the diagram. I'm going to just go through very quickly again so we've got six inputs of the hack CPU and these six inputs each of them works on the X and the Y inputs and eventually uh, channeling this through the logic gates in order, in order that we can get a F um, of X and Y as an output. So the ZX and the NX works on the X input, it's 16 bits, and the ZY and the NY works on the Y uh, input, 16 bits too, and the F control bit works on both the X and the Y, it's either summation or bitwise end, and also we've got a negation at the end. So what I have here is a very crude um, diagram um, which I drew with pen on the pen paper in order to understand how the information flows through um, coming out here. And at the top I pasted the table and the control bits which works on the input bit X and Y in order to understand the diagram. Now, um, at first, we're going to look at the X input. We've got two inputs coming in, so we've got an X input coming in here. We've got uh, Y input coming in here, and you can see that the initial part of the diagram is exactly the same for X and Y. That's because the ZX and the ZY is the same kind of function, and the NX and the NY is the same kind of control bit and operator. But because we have a selection here, so whenever you see an if, you know you roughly can guess that it involves a multiplexer and the multiplexer. So whenever you see an if, you would know that you can actually use multiplexer to do the selection. So we can see that if zx is 1, uh, it's true, we are intending to change everything to 0. Right, so in the multiplexer, what it, how it works is you've got two inputs, right? We definitely have the first input as an X, and the second input we can put the false, which actually change everything that comes in, or even this completely disregard the X coming in, and we pick the false instead using the multiplexer control bit. In this case, this is in fact the ZX. It's not clearly uh, written here, but it's, this is the ZX. So the ZX, when the ZX is zero, when it's false, we get, we select the X and let it flow through. So this means that we're not changing X at all, we're just letting X go through if it's zero. Now, if, it, if the ZX happens to be one, it's true, then we are not taking actually the X, we're just giving it zero. So we put a false here. And since it's 16 bits, false means that uh, 16 bits of zeros goes through here. And that solves our first you know, uh, problem here, the ZX. Now proceeding to the NX, the NX is essentially just negating. And we know that we can use the NOT gates, right, in order to implement the NOT X. And again, the NOT um, logic gate here, with the X flowing through here, going through A, or it could be a B, which completely changed the X here and let it flow through. So over here we've got an NX, which is the control bit. 
So we need to realize that uh, the annex is a control bit. If it is zero, we do nothing with x, so we just let the previous x from the multiplexer here goes through. But if this happens to be one, then we are choosing to not the x or to negate the x, in which case we've got already done it here. So the negation of the x goes through. And this is the first two selection. Now I don't need to explain the z y and the n y because they are completely uh, the same as what we have here for the z x and n, n x. So once our x has completed its journey and also the y completes its journey, we're going to f and n o, right? And you can see here that for f control bits, it's using the multiplexer here to select either x plus y or x and y okay um, and let's try to solve this first before proceeding to n o because it's rather simple so we've got this coming in and we know that the f it does two things the first thing is you either um, do an summation you have a a, a, a 16 adder Okay, so in our previous video we've covered adders before and this should be quite simple now to you. So we've got a, we've got two, two solutions needed here. We've got the x plus y, which is a 16-bit adder, okay, which is here. On the other hand, if we do not select f as a 1, if, as it, if x is false, if f is false, we are ending, bitwise ending the x and the y, in which case we're doing it here with n16. And these two should be quite simple to implement. So we've done that first. We allow x and y to go through the end. We allow x and y to also go through the at 16. And they both come out that way. So when the f is 0, it's false. We're actually doing x and y, in which case this goes through. If, however, we are using uh, f as is true, f is 1, then we have an x plus y, which is a 16 bit adder. So we, if f is 1, we allow, we're selecting x plus y to go through. And eventually, this, is the, this will be the same thing. So we've got a no control bit here, which controls either 0, letting this pass through, or if it's 1, we let this pass through. In which case, if it's 0, the original value goes through as an output. Otherwise, the negation for that goes through there and it just flow, eventually flows out. Now, in the CPU implementation, we've got other values which we need. And earlier in a video, which I did um, earlier, we've got an NG coming out, but also an ZR, uh, ZR here coming out. And this is essentially for uh, selection and comparison and jump. So that ends our workshop, uh, looking at the diagram of the ALU implementation. Now, once you realize that this, this is how we, we work, right? Once, whenever you have a, an if, you know that we're using mux gates, and the rest, you know, x goes to zero, x is, is, is not x, y is zero, y is not y. Uh, we have the summation of x and y. We have the x and y bitwise end and a negation, we can easily implement that and using multiplexers, again multiplexer 16, to select our individual solution so that we get a proper ALU working. And that ends our tutorial on the ALU implementation using diagram. You can see how simple it is actually to understand how information flows through by looking at a visualization of a diagram rather than on using codes and I hope this helps and if you like this video please subscribe because there will be more videos coming in please like and also give your comments suggestions and so on down below here thank you for watching